Hi, I'm Treetal, and in this video, we're going to learn how to use the Prince Edward County Municipal Geographic Information System, or GIS for short. In particular, we're going to do three things. I'll show you how to find properties, how to locate the property boundaries, and finally, how to find out the zoning and identify any environmentally protected zones. So let's get started. How do you find, first off, how do you find the municipal GIS? Well, you could go to the municipal website at the county.ca and look under the GIS department. Maybe easier is to go to treethall.ca under the useful tools page and click on the municipal GIS link. When the GIS comes up, you'll we'll find that it's uh, based around a map very similar to Google Maps. Incidentally, if we want to get a little more room, we can just click to make the toolbar go away, which we can get back using the tool button in the future if we want. Well, first off, how do we find a property? Well, we could merely navigate our way uh, in the way in which you might uh, search around on Google Maps. Or alternatively, we can use the search bar at the upper right if we know the property address. So in this case, it's 3598 County Road 13. Uh, before uh, we drill down, I just want to reassure you that we're not snooping in somebody else's backyard. This is a property that my wife and I uh, actually own. So click on the link to get to the address in question. And there you have the area of 3598 County Road 13. I said the area because this search function, street address search function, will get you to approximately the right area. But to be honest, it's not terribly exact. So if we want to get to the property exactly, we'll need to click on the layers button down at the lower left and then go up and expand the, the property information section. Now, if we click on address points, we'll get the street addresses for, for any property that has a street address. And as you can see, 3598 is actually over here. That's the property we're interested in. Well, we found the property. Now we want to identify the property boundaries. All we do is to go down, still under property information, and click check the uh, box for parcels. And that gives you the pop parcel or property boundaries. Uh, there you are. That's what the property looks like. Uh, impose the property boundaries shown on a general purpose map like this one are only so interesting. What you may find more helpful is to go to the uh, down to this box sort of on the lower left where it says general base map is what it's uh, for. And this is where we select the map that we want to use with the uh, with the GIS. Let's go over to drape, drape aerial photography. And now uh, this is potentially more, more helpful. Now it shows the parcel boundaries superimposed on a picture of the property. And so we can get our bearings uh, a lot better. I just, we can see the property boundary runs along a fence line and so on. These are not, uh, the property boundaries shown on the GIS are pretty accurate, but they're, they're not a survey. So they can't be used to, to solve a dispute. But if you wanted to know, well, does this property go to, you know, how many tree lines, how many fields back does this property go? They're perfectly suitable for that. Now let's, uh, we said the, uh, in addition to identifying properties and the property boundaries, we also wanted to be able to uh, figure out the zoning for a property. Well, in order to do that, let's just go down a little bit further to where it says planning and development, expand that box, and then click on the, the uh, box where it says zoning bylaw 1816-2006. That's the current zoning bylaw. Do not pick the zoning bylaw before October 23rd, 2006. Uh, that's not in force anymore. So now, uh, now that I've clicked the zoning bylaw box, you can see how the property that we're interested in is zoned. It's zoned Rural 1, RU1. 
uh, sub property next door is zoned RU3 or RU2. Uh, RU1 is uh, RU1 208 has some special provisions on it that you'd have to look up in the zoning bylaw. EP, not surprisingly, with the green EP with the green crosshatch is environmentally protected. And if there are some areas on the map where it's not clear what the zoning is, you don't have to memorize the, the color codes. Just uh, go in more closely, magnify uh, the map, and you'll find out it'll show right there. So this, this particular property is uh, rural residential one and rural residential two. So finally, we uh, wanted to identify EP zones. Why is it important? Well, you cannot build or develop within 15 meters of the boundary of an environmentally protected zone. So if you have an EP zone on your property or a property you're considering, it may impact where you can build, uh, where you can build basically. However, there's something else you need to know in addition to the uh, the uh, areas that are shown on the GIS as zoned EP, there are some other EP areas that you need to be aware of. So first, let's go up here and click on water courses, streams, <laughs> uh, anywhere. And now you can see in blue over to the right is a water course. Anywhere there's a water course, that is automatically considered an EP zone and you can't build within 15 meters on either side. There's one more area that are uh, one more type of uh, property uh, landform that's also automatically considered an EP zone. And to see that, we'll go down here and we won't, we'll move from the aerial photographs to the topographical map. Topographical map shows uh, the change in elevation on, on land. And so here is a heavy line marked 90. The next heavy line is marked 80. So there's 10 meters between those, uh, between those two lines with a lot of the finer gradations in between. Anywhere you have a, an escarpment or a cliff, but even an escarpment, that's automatically considered an environmentally protected zone. And once again, you can't build within 15 meters of it. Well, that's it for this video. We've covered three things, how to find a property, how to locate the property boundaries, and how to find the zoning and any EP zones. If you have any questions about using the GIS or any questions about Prince Edward County real estate, please contact me. I'm Treat Hall. Thanks.